करके and we realized that yes you know there were there were other people who wanted to use the technology that uh, we had developed and the the tools that Andrew had written uh in some developed countries like the UK and there was also a, a real need for someone to do something to assist uh parts of the developing world Andrew behind the scenes created Bailey and then used a small sample that he had created and he had got the the actual information from various sources commercial sources sometimes and he used that as leverage to get more people involved then it was a natural follow on for the courts to become interested and then for a british bailey to to be set up and for all the information to be ported over to the united kingdom and now it resides there in its own server we are getting a larger collection we are starting to get more of the important judgments we're getting them faster than the commercial services we're able to put judgments up within 2 hours of of them coming down in court I think of myself as Canley's mother because um I approached Danielle Poulain at Lexham with the germ of an idea to make a virtual law library. We were indebted at the beginning to Osley and in fact in the early days when we didn't have the funding they generously allowed us free use of their Sino software. but of course then as we matured we really realized that we had needs that their software couldn't serve one of them being that we needed a bilingual search engine and we started to develop specific nuances and abilities of our search engine that met the needs for the canadian for the primary legal material i think it's pretty much accessible so now we want to do the same elsewhere or help people to do the same elsewhere so we we got involved in africa and various countries in africa and burkina faso in niger and there we're trying to do the same to help them to build system to make their legal system more accessible the new zealand part of ostley had only 3 databases so you've got to understand new zealand and australia have a sort of testy relationship at times what i put to graham was that maybe we start an nzly which is a front door and i would try to persuade more new zealand courts and tribunals to give us their data to share with the australians we have um the treaty of waitangi between us and our first nation their intellectual output is regarded as their cultural treasure as well as law making so you would never just go and take it that would be wrong so what i tend to do is to have the negotiation first then put up a test site once they've seen what we're doing then generally getting more than permission in principle is not difficult and that has happened we've now got 19 databases in the last 3 years Pankley um was started by the University of the South Pacific and it was started as a means to use the new technologies of the internet to supply legal information to our students who were scattered across 20 island uh, nations of the Pacific A lot of the material that we collect is still in hard copy form and it is still a case of physically going out and um collecting the hard copies. It didn't make sense to wait until they had internet to start the process of providing the materials. The Southern African Legal Information Institute has developed its own momentum. We started off with 700 cases from the Supreme Court of Appeal in Bloemfontein in South Africa. We then started to go and travel into the region. We went to Botswana. We manually scanned in documents in a hotel room and we brought that back to South Africa, um, uploaded it to the website and then suddenly we had 500 judgments from Botswana courts. And before we knew it, we were getting calls from people across the region who also wanted to participate in this. In 2001 when the current chief justice took over office 23 judges were sent home the chief justice you know sort of and the board interviewed me and asked me to help set up the law reporting at that time i thought there was an existing institution <laughs> to my shock there was nothing 
there was just an empty floor, no table, no seat, yeah, no employees, and uh, no judgments. <laughs> I was able to use the students at the universe to help me undertake collection of the judgments. So, you know, we got students to go to the various archives throughout the country, collect the judgments, and we undertook the typing using students again, and then um, copy reading them and proofreading them using the same students. Sometimes I don't believe it. Uh, I have a staff base of 42 people. Uh, I have uh, 22 students at any one time working for us on a part-time basis. Uh, we have managed to digitize all the judgments from 1975 to date. We have managed to collect the Kenya Gazette from 1900s to date, legal notices from 1900s to date. We have managed to have all the laws of Kenya online, updated on a daily basis, available online for free. For us, the biggest revelation over the years has been the existence of a tremendous audience for this material. I know that uh, the teaching of law has greatly improved. I get a lot of feedback professors from professors at the university. Uh, the research papers that are done are coming out are much better. We had um, an email from a professor in Botswana and he said to us that we have thrown open the windows of research. We find that a lot of uh, special interest groups have built up websites that rely heavily on linking to Bailey. Nowadays, I think that lawyers are not uh, anymore national lawyers. They are European, international lawyers, so they need, uh, uh, absolutely, they need uh, to know the national, uh, the different national legislation, the different national laws. We heard from all kinds of people who were engaged in professional activities that bumped them right into law that they wanted to understand better, whether it was people in the banking industry who wanted to understand the various layers of banking law that applied to them. We had a feedback from, I can't remember, it was a researcher or someone that rang us up and said, I can't find the case of uh, cases of this particular court, but I think it does exist. But I can't find it on Ostley, so does it mean it doesn't exist? And we said, um, no, uh, it, it probably does exist, but it's just that their decisions are not on our side. So that was the time when we thought, that's, that's really when the table has turned, where you say, if it's not on a particular side, whether it be Osli or some other side, that that means something doesn't exist. A woman walked up to me at a conference in Japan two years ago and introduced herself as the person who had redrafted the Vietnamese civil code largely based on what she had seen on our website in certain sections of the U.S. code. You know, that's, that's 100 hits a year, maybe, uh, which made me think, you know, the impact we're having really has nothing to do with those numbers. And, and that, that's true of the LIIs generally. I mean, I think we've had, a, a, I think everyone who's involved in this has had a tremendous liberalizing effect.